Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a house plant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I like to collect different plant species and figure out their care and propagation in our homes and share them here with you on YouTube. So if you're into that kind of content, please do subscribe to my channel and send me likes. So in this video, we're going to talk about the Dishkidia ruskifolia. It's also known as the Dishkidia million hearts. Uh, it's a very beautiful species uh, coming from the Philippines. So shout out to my Filipino friends. You guys are the warmest. You guys leave the most uh, positive comments and vibes. So thank you so much. I'm going to quickly go through the care and then I'm going to propagate this plant and give you a few months update on this plant. They are very slow growing. So it's going to be a few months for me to finish this video. Uh, so let's get to it. First of all, <laughs> my hands are getting stiff. <laughs> In terms of uh, sunlight, this plant can take anywhere from medium to uh, some direct sunlight. If you give it some direct sunlight, this plant will give you some sun stress, which is these beautiful red marks uh, on the leaves. However, it cannot take full sun. It will absolutely burn if you give it full sun. It actually doesn't need a whole lot of humidity and I find that they do well both indoors and outdoors. With watering, <laughs> this guy is like a succulent. You don't really want to water it much at all. It doesn't forgive you if you overwater it. So I would definitely say uh, keep it a little bit on the underwatered side. And actually you can see wrinkles on the leaves when they're getting thirsty. Uh, this plant actually can get really fat leaves, like smooth uh, fat leaves if it's uh, well nourished. In this uh, pot however, as you can see it's a tiny little pot and there's so many plant material coming out of this that I believe this is super root bound. I actually saw this is some, uh, some dried uh, vines right here and a lot of them are wrinkling even though I'm watering them twice a day so yeah this is a very thirsty plant in bad badly and <laughs> bad need in in desperate need of repotting so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna uh, repot it to a bigger size I may of course divide it into several pots because you know me I like to divide my plants and I'm also going to propagate them there are many ways you can propagate this plant so I'm gonna show you that in um, in a minute with uh, fertilizing, you actually need to fertilize this a little bit, uh, standard with any house plants. Uh, otherwise, you may see it uh, stop growing or slow down in growth. Uh, Dishkidias actually do have a symbiotic relationship with ants in nature, although I'm not particularly sure with this species if they do that. But yeah, you do need to fertilize it lightly. I haven't had any pest issues with this plant, so it's relatively pest-free. Even though mealybugs have gotten on many of my Hoyas, this plant has been relatively untouched. Oh, and actually, uh, while they're slow growing and they're relatively expensive here in Indonesia, I've seen some really big ones in Thailand. They're super good at growing the shkidias. And I don't know if I have pictures, but if I do, I'll, I'll leave it on the screen uh, from when I went to the Bangkok market. Uh, yeah, they can get enormous. So I can't wait for mine to get big. So in terms of soil, actually, they can live in many types of potting mix. However, uh, I found it in my condition and in my care because I'm an uh, overwater, I'm hopeless at it. I give it a, a or it and all, a, or it and all of my dishkidia, uh, a pine barks with a little bit of worm casting and burnt rice hulls and some perlite in it so that they drain really fast. Also, I find that the bark will help them. Uh, develop gripping roots so they really want to grip onto things because previously when I bought this plant it was in a coconut husk and I had to break off, put open the husk and take out the roots and I realized that the roots are really really grippy like they really are true epiphytes they want to live onto things so giving them that bark uh, potting mix for them to grab onto I think will keep them extra happy so I'm gonna take this uh, out of its cage I got this really cool pot from uh, Bangkok and actually uh, contacted the, the, the brand to see if they were interested to distribute her here in the Indonesia. But yeah, I got no reply over on DM. So I guess I can't bring this product into Indonesia. This is proving to be very difficult. Ah, a few leaves actually broke off. Ah, oh, come on, come off. It's a real struggle. And I see there's another, <laughs> another Dyscudia that's stuck in here. I think this is a different species. So I'm gonna propagate this in a minute. <sighs> yeah, I think this is, uh, I can't remember the species name. Uh, Imbricata? I don't know, I'm not sure. But this is a juvenile leaf, so it doesn't have that bulate yet. It's supposed to curve <laughs> into an, an apple shape. <laughs> Very nice. 
I may actually release this onto one of the aeroids with the mast pole to let it climb up the mast pole to live with the aeroid. I'm, I've been meaning to do that with all my aeroids actually, with my mast poles. Yeah, I broke something. So yeah, this is the, the pot that I got, the, the hanger I mean. Okay, so let me take this out of the pot. It's gonna be a big um, reveal moment to see how root bound this is. It's actually very wet in here. It's been raining every day. So, oh, it's not so bad, but I do see mealybugs right away. Yeah, I'm gonna show you. <laughs> I've lost a lot of the, uh, the leaves. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I'm gonna show you guys up close what the uh, mealybugs look like. So yeah, as you can see here, I can already see plenty of mealybugs. And it's actually very, very hard to um, uh, put uh, fertilizer and also like uh, my uh, furadan, which is an, uh, fertili uh, fertilizer, which is a pesticide that I really like to use for the soil. So I haven't been able to do that, but now I can. I'm gonna upsize the pot. And I'm actually give this a terracotta pot because it's raining so hard lately. And I feel like this is too soggy wet for it to be happy but at the same time it's weird because they're also very um, dry as you can see from the leaves it's actually very wrinkled looking it's, it used to be really fat leaves so I don't know what's going on it could be the the stress from the mealybugs so yeah I'm gonna pot it uh, into a slightly bigger pot on uh, terracotta and then I'm gonna uh, propagate a few strands I'm not gonna divide this because I can't look at how woven the, the, the roots are I can't <laughs> do much about it so I found a pot for it, which is actually just a little bit bigger than uh, the pot before. Look how nice. This is beautiful. <laughs> I'm excited for this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pot it out. I'm gonna choose my general purpose potting mix this time because I know that with terracotta pot, they do dry out pretty fast. Also, I'm out of bark. So ever since I did my soil video, all the uh, pine barks on Tokopedia are sold out. So <laughs> I... I'm gonna work with what I have for the time being. Just move the, ha the hair away and uh, I see one here. This, this came right off. So I'm gonna propagate this. This is already rooted. How cute. So this plant is actually pretty sharp. Like the, the point at the edge of the heart can actually poke you and do some serious pain. So just be careful when you're uh, repotting. So I basically just move the hair out of the way and and just uh, put uh, potting mix in. In my general potting mix, I put cocoa peat, perlite, burnt rice hulls, and worm casting. And it's done. Very nice. Oh, and before I propagate, I'm actually going to show you um, the Dischidia uh, ruscifolia variegata, and this is so hard to find here, and I got them as a tiny plant. And I mentioned this in my previous Dischidia video, so you've seen this before, and I give you a little bit about the care, and also I show you how I'm propagating it this way. So I'm basically, I have two pots. I, I bought them as, in, as one pot with two strands of uh, the plant that I um, propagated to the next pot over, and look at how full that pot is. And I kept circling the vine around the pot so that it will root into the pot. And when it's rooted, it's gonna grow faster because it's got a lot of root material in there. Uh, I can also cut after uh, between the internodes after it's rooted so that each of these uh, internodes can give me a full plant. But, <laughs> sorry, I digress. I also uh, put it on, um, a, a I, I have a pot of sphagnomoth and just lay the vines on top of the sphagnomoth and let it root. So as you can see here, this is already rooting into the moth. I pulled it out earlier, I shouldn't have. But then after it's rooted, I can actually just cut this section off and just propagate it into a, a medium. Uh, so this is also one way that you can uh, propagate dishtidia. It's just having them lay over the next pot over. It's kind of like air layering so that the parent plant is growing, the, the vine is growing and it's also rooting. And when you're done, you just severe it between the pot. Just cut it and let, let them grow on, on its own. Actually, that's my preferred method of uh, propagating them. However, you run the risk of like, for example, you're trying to pull this pot out to do something. I don't know what you want to do with it. And you just end up pulling all of the pots away and you have a mess. Uh, I've done that many times. And, and I digress a bit, but there's a string of hearts here as well. So I've put the string of hearts um, in a 
butterfly method as well, the same way that I do with the, my Dishkidia that I'm going to show you later, butterfly method. And it's growing new leaves, how cute. And that one is still alive. I have this here for about three weeks now, so this leaf is alive. It's probably rooted into the sphagnum moss. Okay, let's start propagating away. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do before I forget is to take this uh, one cutting that we had earlier. It just fell off the pot and put it straight into the, the potting mix. So this is my aeroid potting mix. Uh, it's got coconut husk, uh, sorry, coconut chip, perlite, burnt rice hulls, worm casting. So it's very uh, good for epiphytes. Again, I cannot find any uh, pine bark at this time. It's sold out. So yeah, I'm going to take this, uh, this is dried vine. <laughs> Mosquito got me. Uh, dried vine here, and I'm just gonna throw it away. It's not gonna do anything. And then, let me see. Uh, let me look for a viable cutting. Let me see. I'll probably take this one. Okay, so I cut it, and of course, the, there's a bit of sap. Uh, apparently, that's uh, very, sent very uh, uh, irritating for the skin, but I haven't had any issues with this. So, um, actually, with the cutting of uh, Dishkidias, you can actually let me take this much off uh, so this is a pretty uh, decent size cutting you can actually propagate this into water and let it root so the roots will emerge uh, from here as you can see this already have aerial roots so the aerial roots are going to get bigger and the leaves are going to still work the leaves are going to be photosynthesizing providing energy for the roots to push out so they're going to be working with each other and you need a balance say if you have uh, very small roots but a lot of leaves uh, it's gonna die, the whole cutting is gonna die off because uh, the leaves are gonna drain too much energy, they need to live, and yeah, the roots are just not enough to keep it alive. So you wanna balance the number of leaves, and in this case, I think this is quite okay because I do have a lot of nodes here that's gonna root, and these leaves are actually very thick and succulent, so they have a lot of energy stored up in them, I think they're gonna be fine. But if you want, you can even cut off uh, two leaves, so you only have this set of leaves because that's all you need for a cutting. And just make sure that it's uh, in there. I'm not gonna do water propagation in this video because it just takes so much time and I'm so busy. But I do know that they work. So if you wanna give it a try, you're not confident with soil propagation, you can go ahead and put it in uh, uh, water first. Uh, and then this, I'm gonna also do the same thing. I'm gonna take this off. Uh, if this uh, white sap does irritate you, you might wanna let it dry out or wipe it off first before you work. So this is also another good size cutting. It's a little bit smaller than before. I would say maybe a good uh, four out of five of these cuttings are gonna be successful. Not all of them are gonna be winners as with uh, most plants. And of course, I'm gonna give you an update. I'm gonna leave these cuttings uh, outdoors because I don't have time to keep them indoors. And they're just gonna get rained on. It's gonna do, uh, yeah, do their own thing, basically. Do one more. Again, take off the leaves, lower leaf. You don't wanna leave the lower leaf in the soil because it's gonna r rot in the soil and they may, they may, it may cause uh, infection that will spread upwards into the plant. So yeah, this is a good size cutting as well. And poke a hole first. There. I might actually even uh, top dress this with a little bit of sphagnum moss just to keep a little bit of humidity within the and the potting mix. Okay, so I'm all set. So that's done. The next method of propagation would be the butterfly method, and this is my favorite method for all Dishkidias and Hoyas and string of hearts too. I'm just gonna take. Uh, I'm trying to find something that already has a little bit of aerial roots because that's going to set me up for success. So this cutting, for example, yeah, I'm going to show you here. Uh, so this is the butterfly man. This is all you need. So as you can see here, there's a little bit of aerial roots. That's going to root. The leaves are going to photosynthesize. They're going to provide energy for the roots. So they're going to work with each other. And the new growth points is going to come out from um, 
where the leaves meet the main stem so that a new branch is gonna appear from there uh, if it rooted properly so I'm gonna just gently put this in on the sphagnum moss uh, however as you can see a lot of elements can uh, move this around whether it's winds or anything so what I do is I just uh, sorry you're not looking I just tuck like I uh, take a strand of sphagnum moss and just tuck it over tuck it over like so and securing it in place I don't know if you can see it here just very gently. I'm gonna do more so you'll see what I'm talking about. Try, again, I'm trying to find pieces that has some kind of aerial roots. Ah, this vine has a lot of aerial roots. And don't worry about the parent plant, it's gonna bush out a lot when you make the cuts. Some of these don't have aerial roots on them, some of the nodes. I'm curious to see how they turn out. They probably will turn to mush and not root at all. That's my guess. So yeah, like for example, this one here, it doesn't have any aerial roots. I think this will turn to mush. And with this top cutting, I'm just gonna leave it alone. I'm not gonna do the butterfly. I'm just gonna take off uh, with lower leaf and just stick this into the uh, growing medium, propagating medium. Okay, so this is what the pot looks like. Very cute, right? And I noticed that with this setup, usually it invites a lot of mealybugs in my previous Hoya and Dishkidia propagation. So I do want to give them a lot of um, uh, furadan. I'm going to do that with all of them. I'm going to quickly show you now in case I do forget to show you later. Um, I'm just gonna sprinkle it on there. So it, whenever it rains, it's gonna slowly release that chemical that's gonna kill any mealybugs that might wanna live there. And it's gonna last a little while too. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. Also, I do use a little bit of uh, Osmocote slow release fertilizer. I don't use instant fertilizer because that's gonna burn them. And don't use organic fertilizer because it's going to rot them at this point. They don't have any roots. But the slow release, because it releases very slowly, and it's gonna work over the next six months period. It's not gonna release any immediate nutrients. I think it's pretty safe. So yeah, that's that's done. So uh, I'm gonna show you the other way of doing this. Hang on, let me find a pretty suitable vine for this. Uh, for this, I think I'm just gonna take something that's already leggy. Uh, for example, here, this one already. Let me, let me just take it off first. Cut first, ask questions later. This one's already very leggy. It's already got like balding spots. So I set up um, coconut husk actually into this pot. So it's just a, a few pieces of um, coconut husks like this that I uh, found the right size. I have to Tetris my way into the pot. <laughs> uh, yeah, and just jam it in. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just stick the cutting in between the crevices. I'm gonna just open it up and stick it in and let it be. This is what they grow in, how they grow in nature, into trees. So. Uh, I find that this method actually really works for them. I found another one, uh, but this is again what we talked about before: too many leaves and um, not not enough root to support all the leaves. This is going to die off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two leaves off. Yeah, the top leaves don't have any aerial roots. Yeah, they're so closely woven together so beautiful but they don't have any aerial roots these are gonna die off i think so let me see I, i'm just gonna i was going to cut here and then uh, propagate the individual nodes but since there's no aerial roots here the best success rate i think is for me to just uh, take off a few more uh, vines below until i have only a few leaves left yeah, and then this plant will have so many nodes that can potentially root into the wood. Perfect, so that's that's my cutting. So again, I'm going to open up uh, somewhere along the, the groove, stick the cutting in and just let it be. And the way that I would water this setup would be to uh, rinse this whole thing in water, submerged, because it does need a lot of time to, for the water to get into the medium. But in this method, you don't really have to water the plant very often at all because the water stays there for a very long time. 
uh, yeah and this this is good too look at how bald this is I'm gonna take it off I've done this with Hoyas too and they seem to really appreciate it they love it I'm gonna put this right here in the middle of every everybody and don't worry about any uh, uh, extra space here because what we're gonna do later as I show you in a bit is that I'm gonna put uh, some sphagnumoth in between the whatever spaces are left so that they can um, what do you call it so yeah so that it'll fill the space and the sphagnumoth will also absorb and release water to the plant cuttings yeah and the plant will live in this setup pretty much forever I think Okay, so I think this is also another good cutting. I'm gonna stick that in right in the middle. You know what? I'm gonna take this out because it's not going deep enough. Nah, I think I'm good for now. So yeah, this is quite a beautiful setup. Look at this. Uh, yeah, this is a very unconventional way of growing. Another way that you could do it is you can also, um, if you don't have a pot, you just like grow it like this and just tie a rubber band and let it fuse together uh, over a long period of time. You just use twine maybe, I don't know. And no one's ever tried or grow it, even invert it inside, upside down. That might be really cool. Again, these are things that are in my head now that I haven't tried before. Uh, but yeah, if you tie this with, with a string, it could be a really cool kokodama type thing. Maybe that is the next house plant trend to uh, put your dishkidias and your hoyas into these kinds of uh, coconut house because they're so architectural. It looks so different. Like uh, imagine that each plant will be just completely different from one another. Yeah, I'm gonna leave this be. I do like the full pot. I'm not gonna uh, mess with it too much. Sorry, I'm gonna actually do one more pot of these because I love how they, they look. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna leave you guys for now. Uh, I will update you guys in a few months. Again, these are very slow growing. So uh, yeah, it'll be many, many months before I do an update. Welcome to a three months update on this plant. So this is the one that is grown in coconut husk. It's doing quite well. This vine is a little bit dried up. I think it may not have rooted well. So I may have to let it go. But the other ones, if you see them, they are putting out baby leaves. So the lighter green leaves are the newer leaves. That one's very new and shiny, very slow growing. But once they have uh, established, they will grow pretty fast. <laughs> There's a stowaway plant here. This plant actually went from under the pot up into the hole. And I'm not going to remove it yet, but let's figure out what it is. It's probably a philodendron heteraceum. So, and this one, I believe, was the one that was... I can't remember which one it was. Hang on. This is the one that was grown... Uh, from a longer vine so it's a little bit longer than the others and this one's putting out baby leaves they have the most the cutest baby leaves look at that so yeah it's taking a while it took three months only to get here if you know how to grow them out faster do let me know down below in the comments but as far as I know they are quite slow I do have some uh, slow release fertilizer here they do get really good light and then uh, there's so many dead leaves here. These are the ones that were grown directly into the, what do you call it, by butterfly method. Somehow this one's taken off a little bit. Or maybe I don't know which one. <laughs> I didn't mark them. So one of them was grown in the, in the butterfly method. But this one's doing quite well. As you can see a lot of new shoots. And this one is slow but steady. As you can see here, it's putting out a baby leaf. A lot of these cuttings are still alive. I may have lost a few of the butterflies over time. I'm sorry, there's a lot of dead leaves here. <sighs> I should have removed them before filming, but oh well. Yeah, this is going to take a long time to propagate. So I guess for them to become established plants from propagate, it'll take somewhere from eight to nine months. That's what I, what I, in my experience. Here's actually one that is probably about I don't know, nine months old, and I got it grown as a short vine, probably this short, and now it's growing pretty fast because it's very established. And I did put this into the next pot over, as you can see all these pins, to let them root, so I can cut them and propagate them. And then this one actually rooted to the next uh, pot over with the string of pearls. <laughs> very naughty. And I think the string of pearls may be in trouble, actually, because it's raining every day. I see some mushiness here. But you know what? I don't have time to fix this problem right now. 
So let me quickly show you the parent plant. Here is the parent plant and actually this got a little bit sunburned. I put it in direct sunlight after our propagation and it's gotten this sun stressing. It started out as tiny little bits, like strands of it, and then now the whole plant is basically sun stressed. I don't know if I like it or not. I do prefer it to be all green, I think. But this plant is actually grown. It's uh, put out a lot of new growth, as you can see from if you compare to the previous video, but this is a little bit overwatered, I think. It rained every day here. So anyways, after I found that it's got a little bit sun stress, I actually moved it here into sort of medium and sometimes bright indirect light so that I don't damage it too much. I do like it a little bit red, but I feel like it's not really photosynthesizing that well when they're this color. So yeah, I, I definitely basically burnt it a little bit too much, but they're doing well. Every vine here is putting out new growth and I actually took many cuttings from this about a month ago. I'm gonna show you the cuttings real quick. Welcome to my balcony. A little bit of spoiler, I feel a lot of plants propagating here and here. <laughs> and let me show you down there. This is where I have them propagated in. They've been here for, I don't know, three to four weeks. Maybe I would say close to a month. And there's some more over there. Some of them are grown directly into husks. And I think they're doing okay. As you can see here, the, some of the leaves are yellowed. And those are the ones that didn't make it. But for the most part, a lot of them do make it. But they're gonna take, I don't know, another two months or maybe even longer to put on new shoots. So these are very, very slow to propagate. So that's why you should not wait. You should do it right now, propagate now. <sighs> Anyways, I'm at Botanist on Instagram. If you have any questions about plant care and propagations, feel free to DM me there. I'll try my best to get back to you. Meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. I will see you in the next video. Bye.